Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DMB. Today I wanted to walk you through the best watercolour supplies for beginners. This video is for anyone who is just starting out and who's not quite sure what supplies they actually need to start. So I'm going to clear it all up for you. And then later on in the video, I'll be unboxing my new Mozart watercolour palette. And I'm really excited because I haven't even seen it yet. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. If you're new, then welcome. This channel is all about art, interior design, architecture, illustration and graphics. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. That being said, let's jump into the video. I've been painting with watercolours for around six years and the reason why I love them so much is that you can really be messy, make mistakes but still come out with something beautiful, unlike acrylic or oil paints where I think, you know, you have to be precise in order to achieve the final result. They also dry really quickly and are easily uh, blendable which I love because I usually go over my paintings with some line work, uh, with fine liners. And the third reason is because honestly, it's easy. It doesn't make me stressed out and annoyed at myself like acrylics or oil paints. I find painting with watercolors really is easy if you learn basic techniques that can create amazing results. I also think that mixing paint with water and having very fluid free paint is actually relaxing for my mind too. I think that watercolours are a great way to de-stress and calm down at the end of each day or at the weekend, which is what I do. The first thing you'll obviously need to start is a watercolour paint palette. There are two types, pans or tubes. And I think that if you're just starting out, pans that have a mixing palette attached are the best. And usually you'll find that in the beginning, tubes are too much hassle and mess. And actually, a bit more expensive than a pan set anyway. So you can save a bit of money there. So just stick to the pans as they are easy to clean, cheap, and they're also easy to mix in. But also be careful when choosing a palette. I know it can be tempting to purchase a palette that you see on Amazon for, you know, like three pounds, but usually these things are too good to be true. Most of the cheap palettes have really low quality pigmentation. And honestly, there is just no point trying to make hard work for yourself. You don't want to be painting for hours and think, why is this not turning out how I'd like? One palette that I highly recommend and I've used for many years is the Winsor Newton Cotman Sketches Pocket Box, uh, which is a set of 12. The reason why I suggest this palette is because it's tried and tested. I mean, for example, just on Amazon alone, it has almost 4,000 reviews. And if you go down, you can see that 77% has rated it five stars. 
I also know a lot of artists that have loved these paints too. The second reason is that it can be easily transported so that you can take it with you anywhere and paint easily. This is because it has its own mixing tray, it's also quite small and it also comes with a tiny brush, which I think is pretty cool. And finally and probably most importantly, the paints themselves are high quality. Honestly, this palette has lasted me so long. The white is running out just now, but I have had this palette for years. And please excuse the palette that I have self-sabotaged with acrylic paint years ago. <laughs> so if you're just starting out, then I would recommend this palette. And all the products that I've mentioned in the video will be linked down below so that you can purchase them easily. My advice from personal experience is to buy brushes with plastic handles rather than wooden ones. I found that every time I left my brush in water it would become damaged and the paint on the wood would flake off. Now obviously in an ideal world I wouldn't leave my paint brushes in the water for too long but look, this is reality and time flies when you're painting and you just forget. I would also suggest buying a set that has both flat tip brushes as well as fine tip, um, as you probably find that you'll need both. And definitely invest in a set that has a few brushes. You don't want to be going out and buying, you know, just one paint brush for like five pounds. You want a set that you can choose from, but you know that will last a long time as well. This is a set by Royal and Langnickel and I've had it for five years and they're fantastic. They don't shed hair, they clean easily and they pick up the paint really well. So I recommend this brush set. Okay, so now let's talk paper. Honestly, this is one of the most important things. When I first started out, I was just using thick card or plain printing paper. <laughs> oh dear. And I was fighting against the paper, therefore the watercolours couldn't exactly shine. The paper became bubbly and when I used the wet on wet technique, the paper would become worn and the paper would then start to disintegrate, which is obviously not what you want. So at the moment, I'm using a watercolour pad that I picked up from the works. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it because it has bubbled up around the edges. But one that I have used before and loved is one by the brand De La Rowney. Also make sure that the paper is 300 GSM or more. That will allow the paint to dry evenly and also not bubble. And this is another tip. If you're planning on posting your work online, for example, to make shirts, mugs, laptop sleeves or whatever, I recommend an A4 size pad. I always just fold my pad and scan it into the printer to get the nice, crisp, clean painting onto my laptop. It may seem tempting to buy these big, you know, Excel pads, but you have to ask yourself, are they really practical? I'm not too sure. Also, when you're just beginning, you'll only need a small area anyway. Okay, now other equipment. Obviously, you'll need a jar. Yeah, I don't need to explain that one. Something else I always use are pencils, obviously. And you're welcome to use any you'd like, but I'd recommend using fine tip pencils or mechanical pencils. And this makes sure that I can get a faint outline that I can go over with paint and have no marks seen. I think you'll also need a kitchen towel or paper towel or even some cloth to clean after you wet your brushes. It will make your life a lot easier. Now I always see this technique um, of people taping down their work or paper and then painting. For me this technique just does not work as when I paint and I draw 
I'm constantly turning my pad around. To create straight lines and details easily, I just find it's easier to turn your page now and then, so personally, I don't use this technique. So that was my top watercolor supplies for beginners, but I really don't want you to become overwhelmed because all that matters is that you enjoy it and you have fun. The one thing I think you should take away from this um, when it comes to supplies is quality over quantity. To really make sure that you're allowing yourself the chance to create beautiful pieces of artwork. Okay, so now let's jump into the second part of the video, the unboxing, which I haven't actually opened yet, so it could be interesting. So I am unboxing the Komorebi watercolour palette by the brand Mozart and it cost uh, £26 off of Amazon. It's a huge set of 40 quality paints. Usually I'm quite weary of huge sets but after doing my research and watching other YouTubers praise this palette so much um, I wanted to try it out so let's see how it goes. Well, obviously the first thing I think about is the size. I mean, clearly you cannot pop this in your bag and go paint in the park or wherever. I don't really actually paint anywhere other than my studio. I don't go outside and paint whilst I'm traveling, mainly because I think it's just messy and I like having a table to lean on. I'd rather explore new places for inspiration, take some photos and then use those as reference images instead. Now it comes with a plastic film around it and there's just like a little story on the back of the palette and it says Komorebi is a simple word in Japanese which describes the subtle beauty of sunlight shining through the leaves of a tree and the dance the rays make. Oh, how lovely. Um, our watercolour paint set has been created with artists in mind focusing on a high level of pigmentation and a soft texture to our paints. Okay. The main reason why I bought the palette was because one, I saw other YouTubers really recommending it and two, because of the large selection of colours. It has your usual colours but then it also has bright neons as well as a large selection of metallic paints and I thought that could be really useful in my painting. Now I haven't tried the Kuratake Gansai Tambi palette, yet anyway. <laughs> But I think that's the vibe Mozart were going for here. When you take it out of the cardboard casing, that it's in an aluminium case. Just a plain case. You can personalize that if you'd like. And when you open it, oh my God, the smell hits you, it's so strong. And it also comes with a little note inside that says, thank you for choosing Mozart Supplies. We're avid artists, that's what makes us unique. We're working to develop a range of products with an artist's needs in mind. That's pretty cool. Nice personalized note. And then it also has a plastic cover on the paints to protect them, which is definitely useful. The paints have a little bit of um, creasing on them, but that's not a problem. And then on the back of each paint, there's the number which matches up to the swatch number, which is really useful. The a swatch card that you are given is actually glued to the back, so you will need a separate mixing palette. Okay, so now I'm just going to get some water and do the swatches. And let's see how those turn out.
were a little bit uh, washed out compared to the reds mm, they were just a little bit lighter than I thought but they're still really good and they have other colors anyway they have darker blues anyway I just think that it's a great selection of bright colors I often think that with watercolor palettes sometimes you'll find the colours are just a little bit dull, but not with this. This is the opposite of dull. It's so bright. Um, it does give a little disclaimer at the bottom saying that uh, when the paints are in the pans, that's not how they're going to look. And they do actually recommend doing the swatches and absolutely I recommend doing that with any paint palette you get. Because once the paint is on paper, then you see the true colour and you can refer back to it for reference. Okay, now it's time to test out the neons. I'm really excited. How are they going to turn out? Actually, that's probably one thing I should point out that with the Windsor Newton... I think that's actually one thing I should point out with the Winsor Newton palette. There's actually no black. So obviously it's fine, you can make black from all the colors. But with this palette, there is a deep black. Look at the neons, they're just brilliant. And I think that if you also mix, mix those in with a few other colors, it could turn out into something really cool. Okay, now it's time to try out the metallics and with any metallics you'll probably have to mix them quite a bit to activate the pigments. That's actually not silver, that's a white colour. 
Mm, yeah, I like that. I just love that there's a selection of bright everyday colours, then you've got extremely bright neons, and then a whole set of metallic colours. Yeah, this one says yellow, um, but it's pretty much like a light gold colour. And that is all of the swatches for the Mozart Komarebi watercolour palette. And I really recommend it if you're looking for a good selection of bright colours. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. And if you did like it, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because you really do support our channel by doing that. This was actually the first video in our watercolor series. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see the rest. Like I said previously in the video, um, if you want to buy anything that I've mentioned, all products will be linked down below. And feel free to check out my own artwork on my Red Bubble shop, which will be linked down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.